Hey, what's up you guys? It's Simon. Welcome back to my channel and for today's video we're actually going to be discussing how to get started in digital art and the reason I decided to discuss this topic was because basically um, within the last few weeks for whatever reason I've been getting a lot of questions from family, from friends, and from um, people on the Amino community basically asking me how it is they can get started and I figured since I've been doing digital art for either 10 or close to 10 years now I think I have some sort of say in um, how exactly you can get started with that so the number one question I get is what softwares are there and with the addition of the new iPad Pro for whatever reason this new product got artists really interested in um, using Apple products for art as well. I know I'm sure there's been things sort of similar beforehand, but I think it must have been done with, um, I guess the addition of Procreate, I guess into the App Store and everything like that, that made artists more interested in checking out stuff like that. So I've broken it up into two categories. There are the normal computers and then there is iPad programs. So. We're gonna get started with computers just because there's more options and it's the most likely thing that you're looking into. So um, regardless of whether you have a desktop or a laptop, all of these programs are gonna work for you. So I've broken them up into free and paid programs. And we're gonna start with free because let's be honest, getting into digital art can be expensive and you're probably on a budget. So our first of three free programs are Krita. Um, I don't know if you guys watch Sarah Tepez, I've talked about her a million times on this channel. If you haven't, please go check her out, she's a really good artist. Um, I believe she uses Krita, or at least she did the last time I checked out her channel, so if you want to see Krita in action, definitely go to her channel. It's very similar to Photoshop. Um, my husband uses Krita, so perhaps I'll insert like something in the description. Um, if he has any sort of comments or anything he'd like to say about the program, but overall it is a completely free and easy to use program. So the next is one that I have not used personally, but have heard a lot about, and that is Medibang. So I've had a few of you ask me to um, try that out on the channel, which I will hear very soon, but um, I have heard good things about it from other videos. All you have to do is search YouTube and see if it's a program that's right for you. So the last one of the free programs is one called Fire Alpaca, and while I have not used it in a few years, I do know that there was a portion of time where for whatever reason Psy was not available to me. Um, it may have been like switching computers and then having some sort of issue with my download, I don't remember. All I remember is that I was trying out Fire Alpaca and I was pretty happy with it. Um, I didn't really have any sort of issues. Um, I don't really know, like, I didn't get time to experiment with, like, brush settings and changing them and su stuff like that, but it was, at the base, a very good free program. So there are two more avenues that you can get into if you're looking for free programs. The first one is one that I do recommend, and the second is one that I don't. <laughs> so what I do recommend is um, seeing if your tablet... It, I'm assuming since you are getting a computer that you are also looking into getting a tablet. If you are getting a tablet, see if your computer, oh my goodness, see if your tablet doesn't already come with software. So, um, I believe it was about 200, 211, 2011 when I got my first digital tablet. It was a, um, Wacom Bamboo Fun, I think. And, um, upon installing the drivers and everything that came with that on the disc, it had, um, Adobe Sketchbook, I think is what it was. Um, and while Adobe Sketchbook wasn't, like, the most in-depth, like, crazy good program, it was still enough that it was able to help me sort of get into the field. It was, it had brushes, it had layers, it had pretty much everything ready to go. So um, if you're just dipping your toes in, stuff like that can be very good to help you kind of figure out what it is exactly you want and need from a digital art program. And then the next one that I do not recommend, that I'm sure some of you have done or have tried or are thinking about trying, and that is pirating software. If you're going to do this, I am not encouraging you to. Please be careful. Um, you will get viruses. 
Um, I won't, I'm not gonna tell you explicitly, don't do this because I did this when I was a kid and I still did it up to the point where like, um, my desktop that I got a few years ago for Christmas is so trashed because I tried to get side two on there and uh, I got a virus that none of my virus protection uh, like softwares can seem to find. So it just runs like a dinosaur even though it's only three years old. So <laughs> I don't recommend pirating software but if you are going to do it be sure you only do it from sites or people that you trust so that you don't end up destroying your very expensive electronics. Please don't do this. <laughs> so the next avenue is if you're looking for something perhaps a little bit more um, just trustworthy or something that you've heard more about, you may realize that a lot of the um, most talked about programs on uh, the digital art field are paid programs. So this is stuff like Photoshop, which we all know is relatively decent, although I think Photoshop is a little overrated, I'm not gonna lie. Um, Paint Tools Eye, which um, despite popular belief is actually a program that you're supposed to pay for, but for some reason Sai is like so easy to pirate, like I literally, I, I you can find YouTube videos, don't do it, cause again, your computer will die. But ever since I was starting out in like 2011, it was like, here's Psy Free, and I just thought it was a free program. It's not. Don't do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, Paint Tool Psy, and then the last one is Clip Studio. Um, I can't really speak for Clip Studio that much because I've never used it, but I can speak on both Photoshop and Paint Tool Psy, and I will tell you that of these two programs, I will rave every single day about how much I love Paint Tool Sci, especially in comparison to Photoshop, because I did initially try to buy Paint Tool Sci too when I first, um, or when it first, like, finally came out of beta, and I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> like, uh, the website was in Japanese translated into English, and then there was, like, a PayPal link, and it might be different now, but when I was trying to download it, it was like, did I buy it? Did I not buy it? I don't know what's going on. I can't read this, so, um... Anyways, so I've been using Paint Tool Sci and subsequently Paint Tool Sci 2 um, for 10 years now. <laughs> it is my number one program. I always come back to it and it is so easy to use. It was really, really simple. Everything's right in front of your face. Um, it's really easy to customize your brushes and if you want to download them, it's even easier. Arguably much easier than Photoshop. I'm going to diss Photoshop a lot because I don't like it. Anyway, so... Um, uh, it's really easy to use. I find blending is a lot better, and it's just overall a much more simplistic and well-done program than Photoshop is. So, the reason that I don't like Photoshop. First things first, Photoshop is incredibly expensive now. It was incredibly expensive when I first started, and that was just for the, like, three months, six month, year subscriptions. I don't think you can even do that anymore. I think you have to pay for Photoshop every month and it's ridiculous. It's so much money. You don't need to do that to yourself. Please don't do that to yourself, especially because while it's not a terrible program, obviously, a lot of professionals use Photoshop. Um, if you're just getting started, it can be very frustrating, it can be very annoying, and it can be very difficult to use. Um, I know that um, in high school, I took a both um, I took a photo class and then what was the other class? Graphic design. I took a graphic design and a photo course in high school, and both of those required me to use Photoshop. And while I eventually got the hang of it, it's still like I I had already been using Sai for about. Um, six to seven years by that point and I was always comparing it. I was like, God, I wish I was doing this in Psy. I wish I was doing this in Psy. This is annoying. This looks bad. I can't blend as well in Photoshop. It's just overall frustrating. But if you've never used another program, Photoshop isn't that bad. It's just horrifically expensive and a little bit difficult to get used to. Um, Sai, on the other hand, is a one-time purchase, and I'm sure if I had been a little bit more patient, I would have figured out how to pay for it properly, and it wasn't really that expensive, and again, it's just a one-time purchase. 
not a subscription, not a monthly subscription. You buy it once and it's yours. So I would definitely recommend Paint Tool Sai and Paint Tool Sai too. Um, if you're not really into like text and everything, like graphic wise, you don't really need Paint Tool Sai too. The only difference is really um, between the original Paint Tool Sai and the second version is that it incorporates a text tool and then it does a little bit more with um, layers. So there's like um, I'm gonna say this wrong, but like a Gaussian blur, things like that, just a little bit more layer styles and um, a few different editing um, things that weren't previously available in the other side version. So if you're not really into like stuff like that, that's like text or like like the blur, stuff like that, just really action based, if you just paint, um, regular side will do you just fine. But um, that is it for the computer-based programs. Obviously there are more, there's things like GIMP and other sort of free programs, but I'm just speaking on the ones that I either have experience with or I have heard great things about from other people. <laughs> so um, if computer's not your deal and you're looking more to get to um, maybe an iPad or if you already have an iPad, you don't need an iPad Pro to um, do digital art on there, by the way, now that Procreate is on the App Store. You, you can use pretty much anything that has the app store. So if you're looking to do art on even your cell phone, this is a good way to go. So there are two programs here and I know the computer had a bunch more, but as far as phones and iPad and stuff go, there's really only two apps I've had an amazing experience with and can compare to the digital art that I'm able to do on my computer. So the first one, which is our free app, is Ibis Paint X. And if you've never heard of it, I did do a video on it. It's basically Procreate for free. <laughs> um, there are a bit more setbacks. You can't um, stop it from registering your hand through the program like you can with Procreate, but that issue is easily solved with a digital art glove. So if you've bought a tablet and you see like those weird gloves that are missing three out of five of the fingers, it's that one. If you put that on, it will keep the program from registering your hand and you won't have the issues that I was having in that video because I didn't think to put mine on. I didn't, I don't, I don't know what was wrong with me. But basically, um, I was paying X is totally free. There is a paid version on the app store, but all that does is give you um, unlimited access to the brushes and also it gets rid of ads. And when I say unlimited access to the brushes, um, what I mean is all of the brushes are available to you in the app. You just, when you first open it for the day, have to watch one ad and it will give you access to all of the brushes for the next 10 hours. Um, versus if you buy the paid app, you don't have to watch that ad every single day. But it is just the one ad and then it's 10 hours you get to use all the brushes, which is basically all day. So if it's free and I watch one ad a day, I'm not really gonna care that much. <laughs> Anyways, so Ibis Paint X is a relatively good program. Um, I don't know if there's anything like a sort of um, text function available. I think there is. Um, I do know that it, like Procreate, has a speed paint function. And the only other thing that I'm um, either unaware of or have never seen anybody do is I don't know if you can import brush settings into Ibis Paint X like you can with Procreate. So um, that will be something I'll have to test out or research for a future video. If you guys want to see me import brushes or if you want a tutorial on how to do that, I might do that if it's a possible thing. So our next option, you guys have heard me say it a million times, you've seen me use it a million times. And that is our paid app, which is Procreate. So Procreate, unlike Photoshop, um, is also just a one-time paid program. You only pay $10 for it on the App Store, and then you've got it forever. Procreate is essentially um, iPad Photoshop, but good. <laughs> you guys have heard me say I don't like Photoshop. It annoys me for several different reasons. So um, because I've never found anything even relatively close to Psy on the App Store, Procreate is perfect. Um, you can import brushes relatively easily. I know I can recommend um, if you're looking for paid brushes, check out Eric Anthony J, his Gumroad. His brush pack is amazing. It was also $10, I believe, and it, it saved my life. Like, if you guys see me painting in Procreate, oop, I dropped my super glue. 
If you see me painting in Procreate, I am using his brushes. I adore them. I love them. They're perfect. So definitely check those out. Um, but if you are looking for something that is free, I believe there is a new brand up and coming called Groot Brushes. They only have a few, but they do have like some other app that I haven't heard of that also has the ability to import digital brushes into an iPad app. So I would definitely check out their website. Um, I exclusively sketch with their, I think it's like their P Midler or something. I don't know. It's their pencil brush in their I or in their Procreate pack, and I'm obsessed with it. So, um, basically, your two options if you're looking for a phone or iPad are Procreate or Ibis Paint. I might look for more in the future if you guys are unhappy with one or both of these, or if you guys have heard of another program that you really, really enjoy, please let me know in the comments so that I can test it out, or so I can, um, at least let everybody else know, like, hey, this is a good one. <laughs> so, the next most asked question I get is what tablet I should get, and this is first and foremost based purely on your comfort level. Level? <laughs> level, not level. So, um... The first thing you really need to figure out is if by just getting started you mean you're trying to take it more seriously and you've worked with a tablet before, that's great. So um, if you've worked with like those flat tablets before, like just the regular graphics tablets, I would say stick with that unless you are looking for a reason not to use one and to maybe switch to a screen tablet. So. Um, I know as a child I started with the flat graphics tablet, but the older I got the more um, into I suppose like looking at screen tablets I kept seeing like the Wacom Cintiq over and over and over again and I was like wow because when I first started I had so much issues with moving around the screen. I, I don't know, something about it was so stiff to me. All of my characters were rectangles. If I can find a picture, I will insert an image um, of one of the first drawings I ever did, if not the first drawing I ever did, on my tablet. You can find it on my old DeviantArt, but good luck finding it. I'll never tell you what it is. It's cursed. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, I just found that all of my work was really, really stiff, so I was looking into moving to a screen tablet but if you work with the regular graphics tablet and you don't have an issue with it stick with the screen or the flat graphics tablet because the screen ones can get a little pricey however maybe you have a little bit of a budget or you don't care about the cost of the screen tablets or you just know that you're gonna be like me and you're gonna end up with little rectangle drawings of people because you're stiff as heck and you can't get used to working on the flat tablet no matter how hard you try the next thing to do is know your budget so there are three brands in the digital art industry that I have found that are the most expensive and that is Wacom Apple and Intuos Intuos is a little bit on the cheaper side but of the five brands that I have it is still um, one of the more expensive ones. So of these three, these three are really dependable. Obviously, we've heard great things about all three of these brands probably everywhere you go. If you see a tablet, it is one of these three. <laughs> um, Apple really only has the iPad, but um, Intuos and Wacom both have so many different models and brands and things like that. So definitely, um, if you're looking for something, you're a little bit worried about buying off-brand, definitely look at one of these tablets. But if you're just getting started and you're super, super on a budget, I have two brands that I have used in like at length and can definitely um, sit behind. So the first one is Huion. I will spell it at the bottom because I'm really bad at pronouncing it, but I've used several tablets by this brand. So. Um, I've used both their flat graphics tablets and their screen tablets, so the flat one that I have right now is the, I believe, the H640P. It was only $60 and it was incredible to use. I still use it to this day. It's a couple years old by now and even though it's really small, it's really, really good quality. I've never had an issue with it. It's always worked really well for me. And then the screen tablet that I used for them was a little bit on the pricey side, but still significantly less than a Cintiq. So a Cintiq can run anywhere between 
um, 2000 to like 900 ish dollars and the 900 is for like really old tablets like the cheapest one I ever got that was a Cintiq was I think 700 and it was a gift for Christmas and it was for 2001 it still had a VGA port that's how old this tablet was and it conked out on me in about I think maybe two years so um Cintiqs be expensive even when they're old so um it's still on the pricey side but when you compare it to this 2000 this tablet was only $400 and the reason that I don't use this tablet anymore is not because it was not any good but because I was a stupid little fool and it was on the floor while I was cleaning my bedroom and I was walking around not paying attention to where I go and all of a sudden I hear this crunch and I look down and my foot's so in my tablet it was heartbreaking it was very expensive and by that point it was nowhere near a holiday and I also had my own job so there was no way I could ask my mom to buy me a $400 tablet again. So maybe you still want a screen tablet but you don't have the $400 like I did not in that moment. Let me bring your attention to a brand that does not get enough of it. XP Pen. Oh my god. I literally almost didn't get this tablet. It was around Christmas. Um, I wanted it as a gift, but I almost didn't get it because it just seemed too good to be true. It's a 13.3 artist tablet, and by 13.3, it means it's 13.3 inches, I'm pretty sure, is how big the display is, and I was like, there's just no way it's that size and a screen tablet and not bad <laughs> like I didn't trust it because the price tag I don't know if I said it already was $200 for a screen tablet a big screen tablet and I've been using it for about um I want to say probably at least a year I think it'll be coming up on a year either this December or maybe it was last December but I'm pretty sure it's this December um and it's been a lifesaver it's very very good it kind of has a little bit like the text on it is very very small but you get used to it about after like a week or two of using it and it doesn't affect the drawing at all it's just it kind of looks like tiny until your eyes adjust to it so if you're looking for a screen tablet that is on the cheap side Look at XP Pen, trust the prices, because apparently the quality is really good. Um, it is the only tablet I've used by that brand versus Huion, I've used about two or three tablets by them, but I can still say that if their screen tablet is this good and you don't want a screen tablet, I'm sure if they have any other, like just the regular tablets, that they're probably just as good. <laughs> so um, the final note on that is just do your research, sort of find um, what makes you the most comfortable, so maybe if, like I said, you're moving from traditional art to digital art and you're not really used to working on the flat tablets and you just want to move to a screen, do your research, find out what the cheapest one is, find out what would be most comfortable for you. Or if you are a freelance artist like me and you're constantly on the move, going back and forth from location to location, traveling, doing whatever, and you want to work as much as possible, then maybe look into an iPad because you can bring it with you whenever. Um, but if you just sit at home and do all of your art in your office, maybe just consider a regular flat tablet. Just figure out what would make you the most comfortable. Maybe you need more than one tablet, like me. I have three of them. <laughs> I've um, acquired them over the years for many different uses, and I love every single one of the tablets that I have had or currently have. So. Just figure out what works best for you. And then the last question that I get, which is arguably probably the second most question that I get, is how do I get good at digital art? And the best thing I can say is it's no different than traditional art, you just have to practice. And I know people hate the P word, but you have to, like literally, you cannot get good at art if you don't do it. <laughs> if you just wait or are trying to think that someday you'll wake up and just magically be better, you won't. You have to keep working on it. I know we've all been guilty of that mindset before, but I promise the more you keep at it, the better you will get. If you have issues with your style um, 
or you just don't like the way that you're currently drawing things and don't even think you have a style in general, I do have a video on that that goes a little bit more in depth in how you can improve your art and how you can improve your style until you get a little bit more comfortable, but the main breakdown of everything is just keep practicing. So. That is all the advice I currently have for you guys. If I think of more, I might do a part two, but hopefully this was um, detailed enough that you guys maybe know where you're headed as far as your digital art journey goes. And I want to give a big shout out to my patrons, Elise Thompson and Sleeps. You guys are the best. Thank you for supporting me every single month. And if you want to help support me or if you just want the cool perks that come with supporting me, be sure to check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash Simon AES Arts. It'll be in the link in the description. You get tons of cool stuff like tiled wallpapers, um, coloring books, potentially tutorials in the future. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but so many other cool, cool things that you will find out if you just go to that page. So be sure to check that out. It'll really, really help me. And don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever. You guys know what to do, and I will see you guys next Saturday. Bye.